Shalom everyone and welcome to this episode of Reboot the Root. As you can see, it's snowing up here in northern Idaho, uh, but we're continuing on in this exciting reboot series of understanding who God is. We're rebooting our, our idea of who God is. Um, so join me if we will as we reboot the root in understanding who is God. Shalom. Shalom everyone and welcome back to Reboot the Root where we're continuing to reboot the root of understanding who God is. So we've got a two themed series here. One we're looking into the oneness of God and the other one we're rebooting or relearning our concept of who God really is according to his holy scriptures. So if you've never tuned in to Reboot the Root before we're all about relearning what we believe in the Bible according to the Bible and getting rid of all of our preconceived and pre-taught ideas that we've kind of picked up along the way in our journeys. Perhaps you're new in Christ, perhaps you're old in Christ, um, but it's never too, learn, too old or too young to learn the right way to study the scriptures, to understand what our theology, our doctrines, and our beliefs are and not to be corrupted by um, by our own Western interpretation of Hebrew scriptures. So when we study the Bible, we have to remember that the whole Bible is a Hebrew, it's one big Hebrew document. And so we can understand that by a Greek English understanding, but we have to understand it from a Hebraic mindset. So that's what the reboot, the root is all about. So thank you for coming back for episode four here, where we're continuing, like I said before, to reboot our understanding of who God is. So in this episode, we're going to primarily be talking about who Yahweh and Yahshua is. And so let's just get right into it, shall we? So perhaps you've always called your God, God. But we have talked about in other episodes that God is a title and God is not his personal name. Why is that? Because upon all of the thousands of religions of gods in the world, they all call their God, God. Um, and, but they also have a personal name for their deity as well. And so do we. So we are privileged to worship the God of the universe, the creator, um, the only true and living God. And so in this episode, we're going to learn what his name is. So by learning who Yahweh is, we're going to know who Yahshua is. Because if you have a correct biblical understanding of the oneness of God, you'll understand that the Father and the Son are one. They may work in different roles or different essences, but they are still God. Um, God is not split up into a polytheistic idea. But he is monotheistic, and, and this is this um, episode four is going to continue to emphasize the akadness or the oneness of God, and that God is not separated. So let's take a look at some concepts of here of who Yahweh is. The name of God, the personal name that is, his name is Yahweh. So that is just one of many pronunciations of the tetragram. Uh, Yod Hey Vav Hey, and tetragram is just means a four letter word. So we have the Hebrew word letters, rather, Yod Hey Vav Hey, as we see here on the, on the screen. We, we see there at the top of the screen, we have the first Hebrew letter. Um, it says Yod, and that um, is followed by the Hebrew letter Hey, which is followed by the Hebrew letter 
Vav and is followed again by the Hebrew letter Hey. And so this is the name of our God. His name is Yod Hey Vav Hey, and in my pronunciation, it's pronounced Yahweh. But there are other <coughs> pronunciations. So um, in this uh, meaning of Yod Hey Vav Hey, we can go back to an ancient form of Hebrew writings, Hebrew uh, alphabet that is, that is called um, is called Paleo Hebrew. In Paleo Hebrew, the letters look different than the, what they are here on the screen. But what they do is they act, all the letters have an actual meaning. They're pictographs, much like uh, Egyptian um, writings. They are also pictographs. And, but theirs are called hieroglyphics. In Hebrew, they're called pa Paleo Hebrew. And so each letter has a meaning. So in Paleo Hebrew, the Yod would mean a hand. The He would mean behold or a revelation. The Vav would mean a nail. So if we put all this together, we'd say behold the hand, behold the nail. Uh, and so we can see that evident in Yahshua, who also carries the name of Yahweh into Yahshua. And so you can see very clearly that this is what Yahshua does. He, he takes on the sins of the world Thus, behold the hand, behold the nail. Yahweh is the most commonly accepted pronunciation, but there's another, another more, another, I'd say a second one that's just as common, it's called Yahuwah. Um, but again, there's, there are others, there are other pronunciations. But when we look at our English Bibles, we see that yod heh vav or Yahweh, has been replaced by capital L-O-R-D, says Lord. So, that's a different type of um, uh, teaching to understand how the English Bibles took Yahweh out and replaced it with Lord. So, um, and we see, we see here on the screen again that uh, we have the name of Yahweh more clearly spelled out, Yod, Hey, Vav, Hey. Um, and so we know that God's personal name is expressed in that as Yahweh. So there are other names of God that you may or may not be familiar with, but they describe who Yahweh is and what he does. So the big difference between Hebrew and English languages is that Hebrew is an action or descriptive language, meaning that it describes what what the word does. So if you have a Hebrew name, your Hebrew name would describe your identity. It would tell you who you are. Where in English, we are a noun-based language where um, your name really doesn't tell much about you. But that's the great thing. When we say Yahweh, we know what he does. We know what his identity is. So other names that you may or may not have heard him refer to uh, is Yahuwah, which I already said. There's Jehovah, that is with the J. That would be an English one because there's no J's in Hebrew. So if we said it correctly in Hebrew, we would say Yehovah. Then we have Yahuwah and Yahuwah, and we have Yahu. And again, we've, we've already covered that there's the name Lord that's in the English Bibles. There's Adonai, which means Lord. Adonai is Hebrew for Lord. Then we have what the Jews refer to Yahweh as, uh, is Hashem, which means the name. So Shem means name and Ha means the. And so what happens with a lot of, uh, a lot of things that happen in Judaism is they believe that yod heh vav -Heh is too holy to say, so they say Hashem. Then we have probably the most common name we've heard our God referred to is Father. Uh, our Father God. That was that's one of the essences or roles of God. So in Hebrew, we would say that his name is Ab, and the reason why we get Ab is because we take the Hebrew letters Aleph and Bet and we put them together. So if we study Hebrew, we know that Aleph means head, and Bet means house. So we would say head of the house means father. Uh, more 
kind of affectionately, we would, we would transform Ab into Abba. And that also means father, more like daddy. Um, and then we would also revert to the Hebrew uh, version of the word God, which is El. El is the singular form. Elohim is the plural form for God. And we would also call him Eloah. We also have El Shaddai. We have Echalom, which means everlasting. We have the I Am, and that's just a most powerful name of Yahweh, just meaning that he, he will be what he will be, meaning he get, he, because he is God, he can make himself out to be whoever he needs to be. Um, then we have the name the Almighty, and we also have the Most High. Looking uh, again at the character of God, where we kind of left off last week, last episode, episode three, we were talking about the character of God. So when we understand who God is, we also have to understand who his character is. And we see God's character is one that's sanctified. Um, so sanctified also carries the meaning of holy, which also means set apart. So whenever in the Bible you see something that says set apart, um, that also refers to as being holy or sanctified. God made the Sabbath, the seventh day, to be set apart from the other six days of creation. So when we keep the Sabbath, we are also being set apart. Only God can make something or someone holy. And so this is important to know that uh, while we may try to be holy, only God can truly make us holy. So this is what we get into is when we have the Sabbath day is the God made that day sanctified or holy, the only sanctified holy day of the week. But when when man comes along and he establishes Sunday as the Lord's day, he has incorrectly set apart a, a day of the week that is not holy, that is not sanctified. So it's man trying to make his own set apart day by calling it the Lord's day. Only the Sabbath of the seventh day is the sanctified day of the week. Hebrew roots advocates a return to a biblical idea of holiness. So that's what this whole journey is about in the reboot, is that we're trying to return to the biblical idea of holiness or being set apart. Um, so when we really try to define really in practical terms what is holiness, holiness simply is the opposite of being common. So uh, that is what being sanctified or holy is, is that we're set apart for God by walking in the an opposite way of the common. Whatever is accepted, whatever the, the 100 is, we want to be the one against the 100. Um, so if we really want to be holy, we will desire to be the children of God, which means that we will be Israel. We will be Israelites. And that's part of the journey of being holy is to get back to what our grassroots identity is. And that is that we are Hebraic and we are Israelites. And so we look at Leviticus 11.44 to see what God expects out of us to be holy. It says, for I am the Lord your God. See how the Lord is replaced there? That would, if we wanted to restore the holy name, we would say, for I am Yahweh, your Elohim. You shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and you shall be holy, for I am holy. So there is a commandment right there that we are supposed to be separated. We are supposed to be sanctified. We are supposed to be holy. There should be something different about us than the people that are in the world. Uh, looking again at the name of God, we see that Elohim is a plural name for God, while El is the singular name. Hebrew form of God. And so this is, this is um, a good time to refer back to the creation account in Genesis where uh, God's, God says, let us make man in our image. That is the idea of Elohim, where um, we're talking about the, the, um, the oneness of God that is illustrated in the three persons of of God with three essences. Now, mind you, they're not different ones. They're not different persons or different identities. They're the same Elohim, but expressed in different measures. So at creation, 
we have the, fa the Father as the Creator, but we also have Yeshua. He is the Word that makes the creation happen, and we have the Holy Spirit, where in the creation we see that God's Spirit came upon the face of the earth. So the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit as one God, as Echad, oneness, is there evident in creation. Um, we also see that Eloah is also a singular Hebrew name for God. Um, like I said before, we said that Hashem is like a Jewish a reference to God. Um, and Lord has re uh, replaced yod heh vav -He in most of our Bibles. Um, or we might see Lord identified as Adonai, meaning Lord or Master. So looking at this graphic on the screen, we can see evident of how Yahweh fits into a scripture and how his name is expressed. So let's go to Exodus chapter 6, verse 3. And it says, And I appeared to Abraham, to Yishak, and to Jacob as El Shaddai. And by my name, yod heh vav -He, was I not known to them. And this is the Institute for Scriptures Research Translation. So you see there, that the yod heh vav -He, that's Yahweh right there in the scripture. So, uh, in the English Bibles, that would have been replaced by something else. Perhaps it would have been replaced by Jehovah, uh, but that would have been expressed at least in Yehovah, but it's more expressed more correctly as Yahweh. Now we must turn to the identity of Yeshua, or uh, English speakers would call him Jesus. So it's important to know that when we talk about Yahshua and Yeshua and Yahoshua and Jesus, we're talking about the same aspect of God himself. So God came to the earth, expressed himself in a form of a man, expressed himself as Yeshua or Jesus. And so I'm sure you have expressed Jesus or Yeshua as Christ, so that would be the Greek expression of who Jesus is in his role. So Messiah or Christ is not his name, but it's his title, it's what he does. It means that he uh, comes to save, he, he is the salvation element of God. So in Hebrew, we would call him Mashiach or Messiah, whereas Greek or English, we would refer to him as Christ. We're still talking about the same thing. It's just expressed in a different language. Um, so we also must understand that Jesus was not a word that was used in Old Testament times. It was not used in New Testament times. I mean, when I say New Testament times, I mean when the Bible was being written, uh, as far as the New Testament goes. And when Jesus walked the earth, he was not referred to as Jesus because this is an English word. English did not, was not invented at this time. Only he, the only three languages that would have been, he would have been expressed in would have been Hebrew, Aramaic, or Greek. So, even Jesus is not a Greek word. So, Jesus uh, would have been translated from, um, the word Jesus, as we know now, would have been translated from Old English. Old English would have been translated from Latin, and Latin would have been tr translated from Greek, and Greek would have been translated from Hebrew or Aramaic. So, in the 1600s, the word J-E-S-U-S -S came into the English Bibles and it was translated from Hebrew. If you do your study, you'll find that the J letter didn't come into the English language until the 1600s. In fact, we start seeing it come in into the 1611 King James Bible. And when we take a look at what Yeshua means, this means salvation. So if you were to look in the Old Testament and look for any word that says salvation, you are going to see this word, Yeshua, because that's what his name means. When we look at Yahshua, we um, look, it's expanded a little bit more, but it's the same name. It means Yah is salvation or Yahweh is salvation. So we see that Yah 
is the first per, uh, per the first half of Yahshua. And so Yah would be an abbreviated name of Yahweh. So you see Yahweh's name is in the Son's name. And that's why we see that the Father and the Son are one. Then we go on to another name that we see in the Old Testament is Yahoshua. And this would mean Joshua. So Joshua, the person who took over from Moses when he died, he became the leader of Israel when they crossed over into the promised land they crossed the Jordan River his name is Joshua or Yehoshua so Joshua can also be translated into Jesus or Yeshua as well uh, so when we look at what Yah Yehoshua means it means Yahweh saves us so here we have Yehoshua Yeshua and Yeshua all based around the idea of salvation so the question arises, which, which was the catalyst for doing this series, is Jesus and uh, Yahshua the same deity? Well, actually, that's not, the, that's not what's the catalyst for the series. The catalyst was, for the series was the deity of Jesus. But still, the idea on conversations have come up from time to time in the circles I travel in, is Jesus someone different than Yahshua? Well, Jesus is a just an English translation of Yahshua or Yeshua. So yes, they are the same deity. Je Jesus is just an English translation of those two names. Um, however, in man's traditions and his Western understanding, he can and has changed to the identity of Jesus was. And so, um, we see this evident when man tries to say that Jesus came to abolish his law, that he had no Hebrew heritage or identity, that he wasn't God, that he did away with the Sabbath day, and that we celebrate his birth with Christmas and his death with Easter. So some of these are the things that change who we see that Jesus really is, but we have to get back to the idea that Jesus was Hebrew and he was Jewish and he, he walked in the Torah he kept the Sabbath day. Um, he, he, he is not painted in the same way as a lot of people may see him today. So that's the whole thing about rebooting the roots. Let's get back and see what his real identity was. Um, so we do know that he was the Mashiach, Mashiach or the Christ, the one who came to bring salvation. So we we know that by looking at the identity of who Yeshua was, we know that he was a Jew and a Hebrew. Um, he walked in the Hebraic lifestyle and he followed the Torah. In fact, he, we know that Yeshua or Jesus was the Word made flesh. We see that in John chapter 1. So if Jesus was the Word who was there with Yahweh at creation, then he, he is the Word that is walking around the earth showing people how to, um, to make his Word more full. So um, when we see the scripture that says that Jesus didn't come to destroy the law, but he came to, to fulfill, we're understanding really what that means is that he's coming to teach us what it is to really walk in his Word and his Torah. Uh, so Yeshua, he also followed the biblical dietary laws. He was a Sabbath keeper. He kept the feasts. He didn't have any tattoos. And he was perfect and holy. This is who Yeshua was. He basically was the example of the Torah. So if you were to put the Torah into an animated form, you would, this would be Yeshua. So we, we want to take a look, or at least I want to, I want to show you how did we get from Yeshua to the word Jesus? So prior to the Babylonian captivity, the Hebrew language was different. Yehoshua, as I've already said, is translated as Yahweh is salvation. And Yahshua would have this meaning that Yah or Yahweh is salvation. So we've talked, I already talked earlier with you about that Yehoshua is a, another name for Jesus. And so this was prior to the Babylonian captivity. 
After the Babylonian captivity, the word Yahoshua becomes Yeshua. Um, Yeshua. Um, and so we see this evident in two scriptures, one in Numbers and one in Nehemiah or Nehemiah. Numbers 11.28 says, Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses. So this is the man who succeeded Moses in taking the children of Israel into the promised land. But then we see in Nehemiah 8.17, we see his name is changed from Joshua or Yehoshua to Yeshua, the son of Nun. So this is the same individual, but the, 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 um, the name is changed, but we're still referring to the same person. So, um, and then we take a look at this name, Yeshua, that it was actually <clears throat> um, shortened a little bit to say Yeshua, where um, the E is taken out and there's like a, um, it's a, um, it's like a contraction. It's a, a shortened version of it. So the Hebrew name Yeshua or Yeshua um, was created. Um, that's why a lot of times you will see a Y apostrophe S H U A. Um, sometimes you'll see it Y E S H U A, but it means the same thing. The Hebrew name Yeshua or Yeshua was translated into the Greek name Ihusus. Okay, so that's the Greek ver version, Ihusus. Due to the Greek translation of the Hebrew letters of Yeshua, which would be um, Yod, Shin, Vav, and Ayin, okay? And they were transliterated to common Greek. So uh, it is my belief that the New Testament was not written in Greek, but it was, a, it was translated in Greek, meaning it was originally Hebrew or Aramaic and then translated into Greek and then into English, ultimately. When Latin took over, Greek, Iusus evolved into the Latin Eusus. And so you see, we still don't have J's in here, but you can see the Iusus compared to Iesus, that it, it, we're starting to see the name of Jesus come out of that. So um, as the alphabets in the Greek and Latin are different, we see that the pronunciations of it are a little bit different and the spelling are different. The Latin spelling and pronunciations of Iusus dominated the Western Christian world for almost 1,000 years before it was changed into, um, into what we know as Jesus. Um, in 1611, the letter J became part of the English language and Eusis evolved into Jesus and was printed in with the first King James Bible. Various Hebrew names in the Bible were renamed in favor of the English language. One of those examples is Jacob um, becomes Jacob. Um, so Jacob becomes Jacob because of the J of the uh, English language. And if you recognize which Jacob I'm talking about, I'm talking about the Jacob who was the son of Isaac and the grandson of Abraham. And so Jacob becomes Jacob, but was later changed to James in honor of King James for um, naming in his honor the King James 1611 Bible. With over 2,000 years of name evolution from Yehoshua or Joshua to Jesus, we see the name of the Messiah change from Hebrew to Greek to Latin to English. Uh, GotQuestions.org says Yeshua is the Hebrew name and its English spelling is Joshua. Eusus is the Greek translation of the Hebrew name and its English spelling is Jesus. Thus the names Joshua and Jesus are essentially the same. Both are English pronunciations of the Hebrew and Greek names for our Lord. Uh, so let's kind of go over this road from Yeshua to Jesus again, shall we? So we see Yeshua or Yahshua are um, Hebrew and Aramaic names where there's no J's in Hebrew because there was no J used in the English language until the 1600s. Yeshua means salvation. So whenever you see in the Old Testament, any, any, any word that says salvation, you're going to see Yeshua. So when we see Eusus, we see that as a Greek translation of Yeshua. 
But then when we get into Eusis, we see the Latin translation, which then in 1611 with the King James Bible, we see the word Jesus coming out of that. So um, that's going to do it for this episode of Reboot the Root, looking at who God is, the oneness of God. Um, we're going to continue next episode in episode five, and we'll continue to reboot our understanding of who God is. So for now, I'll say this is it for Reboot the Root, and I'll say Shalom, which means peace. <laughs>